Uh, good morning. This is Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar Today, and we're here with uh, jazz organist great Tony Monaco. We're talking about the role of guitar in the organ trio. Um, th my, my first question, and Tony, we started talking about it, was the role of the guitar and the organ uh, that they play in the, in the trio, and you were t telling us about that. So why don't you go ahead and continue with that? Yeah, well, when Jimmy Smith came on the scene, he kind of changed the way the organ was played. So they went from like the organ player playing bass pedals and then big chords with the left hand and melodies and leads to the left hand playing bass, which left a hole in the chord side. And that's where the guitar player came in. Because then when the organ player's taking a solo, the guitar player's comping. The guitar player and the organ player are like a hand in glove because mm -hmm. each, each one does the job that the other one needs when it's time to do that job. And, and what I meant by I don't like a real busy guitar player is because when I'm taking a solo, the guitar player's job is to listen to where I'm going and fill in the gaps, not overtake me. And it's the same on the other side. And we could talk about my experiences with some guitar players in sessions like Mark L. You know, he's very particular about who comps when. Some guitar players don't care. Interesting. You know? Yeah. You were saying about uh, Pat Martino, because you played with, you toured with him, that you know, Pat views himself more as a, as a trumpeter and not really a polyphonic instrument, not really a guitar player. Yeah, I've often heard him refer to himself as a, a, lead, a lead instrument like, like Miles, like trumpet. He views the guitar as a single note right. uh, lead instrument, like a trumpet. His comping is, is you know, a little different. And I don't know if that was after his accident or what, or whatever happened to him there. But um, some of the older recordings that I listened to when Don Patterson was playing with, with uh, Pat Martino, when Pat Martino right. was playing with Don Patterson, then Pat comped a lot different than he does. I don't know, something changed. Um, so what do you look for in a guitar player when you're, when you're like, let's say you, you got a gig and I mean, I know you, you've worked with everybody. You mentioned Bobby Broom and I know you work with Pat and I, you work with, you know, a lot of people. And I was watching some of your videos in the last few days, you know, the, the ones on YouTube and all of that. And I seeing all kinds of different guitar players. And I've played with a lot of people like, I love, we play a lot. Play with who? I'm sorry. For Reed Hawk. Oh, okay. Talk about one of the best guitar players in the world, in my opinion. Wow. He got, that, got that figured out, huh? Well, I mean, you know, opinions are opinions and best and best are what? So, yeah. But when I say best, because that man could play fluid lines as well, if not, you know, I won't say better or worse, as right. well as anybody else I've ever played with, anybody. With blistering speed and blistering accuracy. Wow. But yeah, he could play the most complex harmonic chords that I've ever heard other guitar players play as well. So that man is pretty deep. And I think he's I think he's under recognized. I mean, you're asking me. No, I'm not. I'm not that's I'm, I am asking you. This is really yeah. good to hear. Bruce Bruce Foreman is another monster. Bruce is a monster. We, Bruce we, is a monster. These guys aren't in their head and their egos. They're so deep into the music that right. they scare you. Bruce, uh, Bruce was in the magazine uh, about three or four months ago. We're going to bring him back to do a, a cover uh, in 21. Um, See, these two guys that I just mentioned to you are complete guitar. Complete what? Complete guitar. Yeah. They know how to comp and they know how to solo. They, um, yeah. I'm, I'm looking for complete, I'm looking for complete guitar player, correct answer, I guess. And someone to stay out of your way. That means complete. He has to know right. when. Yeah. Yeah. And when it's time to lay in, they got to be able to lay in too, whatever that is. If it's, it does, you know, fast notes to me doesn't mean laying in. Uh, laying in means when you, when you go out of your body and into what God let you learn how to do. What's interesting, um, the, the audience's reaction to organ trio is, is always um, spectacular. And, and the emphasis, and we talked to Dave Stryker and I had a conversation about this. Another great guitar player. Oh, yeah. Uh, is the groove. Everything in organ trio is about the groove. I mean, you just, you know, Dave said, if you're not bobbing your head, that, <laughs> you know, you're not, you're not doing your job, you know, or if the audience isn't bobbing their head. So is that, is that basically Jimmy Smith? Is that like, is that where that all came from? Or 
I think the, the reason why that came from, and that's why I love doing what I do, is the, the organ was never respected, first of all, as a legitimate jazz instrument. So we're kind of the, what do you call it? Bandits, you know? <laughs> we're kind of the, the outcasts, right? And we scare the traditional uh, trio because we got two thirds of the rhythm section. You know, I can go out and play a gig with just a drummer and get a great gig. Who else can do that? Organ players and drummers only. That's why you've seen all those pairs. And for every great organ player, there's a great organ, there's a great drummer and a great guitarist because they they match, they match, you know. The reason for that is I think the organ promotes happy music. <laughs> right? I mean, when you're shuffling yeah. and you're dancing and you're, doesn't yeah. that make you happy just thinking about well, it? Well, I notice, I'll tell you, one thing I notice about organ players just in watching you and Pat Bianchi and, and, and son, you know, the, the, the attitude of, of energy and up just permeates all you guys. You know, there's, there's, no, there's no moody organ players out there that I'm aware of. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, like, they'll you get, get even a, alive. You get a moody blues guitar, you know, movement, not the moody blues, but you can get a guitar player who's like, you know, yeah. or, or you can get this. But organ players are like, you know, they're they're doing it. You know, it's compelling. You know, it's very com it's very compelling. Um, you know what 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 else is interesting about the the um, the organ, and this is getting a little bit off topic, but I think it's kind of important, is that one instrument dominates the genre, the B three and C3, obviously, but the B3, I mean, it's not like every guitar player in the world plays an L5 or whatever, but every organist plays a B3. I mean, uh, you know, you're not, you're not, I mean, I, I know guys go out and tour with, you know, with the suitcase. It's just not the same, you know, it's just not the same. And, um, you know, and, and uh, I mean, it sounds pretty good and they get it all going, but man, when that B3 is heated up and going and, creating all those extra harmonics and, you know, stuff is flying. It just... The so clones don't create the same. Uh, they're, they're very good. I mean, because today, unfortunately, due to the age of the older instruments and stuff, some of the younger players are using uh, what they call clones or replicas of sure. the organ. And they're very good. They are. Uh, but they're not the same. Um, and the reason why, like you just said it, see, when you make a guitar, it's an analog instrument. You know, the, the beauty of the sound comes in the design of the case, I would assume, and the kind of wood and all kinds of little variables that make one sound a little bit different, but they all buy the same pack of string. They <laughs> like thicker strings, or right? So the components are very similar from one guitar, although the tones are gonna be different based on how they're generating tone. Where the real organ generates the tone with the wheel spinning. Right. And there's 91 of those suckers spinning. Mm -hmm. So when you play a note, it's not a digital sample. It's like the sensation you used to get when you heard those people play on the glasses. Mm -hmm. You know, they make that vibration on the glass and they make it start to, to, to um, sing. Right, yeah, sure. The organ does that. Yep. Yep, I would agree with you. It sings, it elevates, you know. I was watching a video. There's a there's an amplifier manufacturer who's legendary. His name is Howard Alexander Dumble. Huh. And uh, and his amplifiers, guitar amplifiers, they sell for six figures and more. And he's, he's he makes them one at a time. Hmm. And, uh, you know, people like Larry Carlton and Robin Ford and all those guys, I mean, they covet hmm. those amplifiers. Uh, hmm. John Mayer, you know, and... Uh, Joe Bonamassa said it's like the amplifier to own. And so I was watching a short video and he was talking about the difference between, between solid state and tubes and solid state amplifiers can sound very, very good. And I use one all the time and I use a tube mm -hmm. amplifier and all that. But he, he made the comment, he said, harmonics can live inside the vacuum tube, but they can't live inside the chip. And I don't know if he's right about that or not, but uh, but it's interesting, you know. It's interesting that all, because all those extra overtones and harmonics and things that give it that life, but, you know. It's just I thought that was a uh, an interesting comment from someone that's uh, as famous he is for making making products. I can tell you one thing that would probably support that answer. What is that? From my experience with tubes, because you know the Hammond B3 is tube. Right. They sound better as the night goes on. As those yeah, they tubes, warm up. They warm up, man. That organ comes to life. Yeah, so they're probably right. 
Yeah, no, they want. They were, I've got a bunch of. I've got three or four tube amplifiers here, and three or four solid state amplifiers, and I use them, you know, for different things, and and I like them all. So but it's just interesting. But they warm up and they and they give. Um, so I saw something this morning that really surprised me, and I guess it shouldn't, but I saw you did that um, video in Riverside at Riverside with Steve Smith on drums. The the Journey drummer, and I I, I mean I know he's 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 been. Uh, voted, uh, I think, for five or six years in a row, most versatile drummer, you know, period. But uh, I was uh, I was pretty impressed with that. Let me tell you about Steve Smith. Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, we're not a drummering magazine, but it is interesting. Well, no, but the organ trio takes all three to make it work. Oh, yeah. See, the drummer supplies comp, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Steve Smith, man. Yeah. He's a devoted musician. I, it's a really apparent. <laughs> uh, we, even though it's called the Groove Blue Organ Trio, obviously we're going to ride on his name to get gigs. Right. So trios have to work in the best way that they work. Right. Sure. I got it. And, but Steve Smith, he loves the fact that I like to play like a big band. Mm -hmm. So I like guitar players that also understand the Freddie Green and that kind of comping. Because a lot of times I'm playing like the big band. Right. And Steve is playing the big band chart with me. Right. Because the upper manual for me might be the all the horns and the lower manual might be the sax section. In that point, the guitar player takes on the role like Freddie Green. Right. And so that's a different kind of guitar player. And not everybody can do that either. But see, with Steve Smith's band, Vinnie Valentino, mm, he's I great. He's great. Yeah, I, I was watching. I, I was watching slash listening. I was going, wow, that's... Uh... Knows how to play with Steve and I, man. He makes us sound great. So that not that part of the guitar player's job? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, so I, I got a couple, just a couple more things here because I just want to keep this kind of short with the quick hit. So organ trio. Um, for people who haven't really had much initiation to it or guitar players that haven't had much initiation to it and want to play it, want to get into it and all that, um, what advice would you give them? What would you, what would you tell them to do in terms of, uh, I mean, obviously there's a long list of who to listen to and all of that, but from your perspective as, as, a, as an organist, um, if, you know, what would you tell people? Okay, number one, I must say this, sir, if it's okay. Sure. Uh, the first thing a guitar player really needs to learn how to do is turn it down. <laughs> Most guitar players play, for some reason, I don't know what started that, but they play too loud. Oh, I, I understand that. And they step all over you. Yep. So uh, I've had conversations with several uh, guitar players about, look, you know, if you don't want me to, to drown your solo out, don't drown out mine. Right. Rule number one is to learn to respect the band and the unit right. and find where you belong. Rule number two is when you're asked to give it all, that's when you give it all. Mm -hmm. Because everybody needs a chance to shine in an organ trio. Now, when you say give it all, tell, tell us what you mean by give it all. You should always be giving your all to music, okay? But right, sometimes people have this false sense of what that means. Oh, I see based on maybe, I, I don't know to, uh, what terminology to, to properly use, but- well, I like that, that, that works. When, when you're comping, when I'm comping, my job then is supportive. Right. Not to be the center of the stage. Right. So I need to know when it's my time to light it up. Right. It's my time to light it up. And well, when it's your time to light it up, right. then that's when you give it all you got right because that's your shot you know right i think sometimes people get too busy all the time right me too i i, I you know in acting um on stage and all of that even if you're not the one delivering the lines your energy is supporting the person who's delivering the lines so if you're like if you're not with them 100 percent and focusing on what they're doing then the audience senses that as well. Mm. And uh, so I, I absolutely understand that. You, you need to be 
fully present at every moment. And just because you're not delivering a line, just because you're not, you know, you're comping, that comping, that skill requires 100% dedication to be the very best comper you can be at that moment. Absolutely. And that, and I, I, you know, I don't see that as much. I don't see it as much with what I'm going to say, you know, true professional bands, you know, like, because when you hire somebody, you hire somebody, you know, is going to do that for you. Um, but um, when I see the, the, the semi-professionals and all of that, and I see these guys like turning around, looking at their freaking phone while they're not soloing or something like that. I mean, you, want, you just want to throw up. I mean, not on my stage. I wouldn't put up with it. That's what I'm talking about. But, but I'm, I'm watching somebody. And I'm, I just want to throw a brick at those people and say, don't you understand that if, you, if, you're, if your um, focus goes away from what's important on that stage, that's where the audience is going to go as well. You can't do that. The over there. Pardon me? You take the energy over Absolutely. there, right? Because it's like, wait, what's that guy doing? So all of a sudden, your ego of looking at the phone because you don't care is destroying the energy. I'm, I'm with you 100%. So, so you mentioned, um, you know, turn it down and, and be present, if you will, you know, 100%. No, not in a mean way. I just think. Oh, no, no, no. Listen, that's... Should, I, I don't, I shouldn't be the one to tell them to turn it down all the time. Well, guitar players are not guitar, but most musicians don't, not to say most musicians, many musicians not, don't understand the, the bandwidth that they're dealing with, you know, the 20 to 20 and, and exactly. And the organ and the, and the guitar, well, they're both very wide instruments and they, they can both fight, as we were mentioning earlier, fight for the same space if the, people playing you know aren't aware of that so if, when you create that space for the for the guitar player by <laughs> excuse me by playing a lead line and playing a bass line you're creating that middle space and he jumps in there but if you're both comping at the same time in that middle space you got a mess this big like uh yeah it's just of a cacophony mid-range mid -range, right no, mid-range Right. So that's interesting. I was watching, um, you know, a couple of your guys you play with and how beautifully you guys interlace, you know, and it was, it was really, really, really nice. Well, the, um, I don't the really have much more. I'm just trying to make this kind of short. And uh, well, I like it, but, but let me just add to the people that I mentioned, you know, here the, go. that line, that line is a lot longer than just the names I mentioned. These are just the people that are popping into my head at the moment that I've played with. I have had the great fortune to play with Dave Stryker. Oh, just yeah. about scared me he's so good <laughs> yeah no i'm serious man dave striker is a like i don't know man he's a monster. you know the word you want to use <laughs> that's a good one isn't it that is a good and it's very it's very appropriate as well i mean yeah yeah dave's wonderful he's powerful yeah very powerful and very secure and very articulate yeah so, you know i haven't had the fortune to play with schofield uh, I have played a lot with uh, Kurt Rosenwinkel in Europe. Really? Whoa! He's our next cover story. Oh well, Kurt. Yeah. Can you tell him, can John Schofield. John Schofield was uh, not this month. Uh, Jonathan Kreisberg's on the cover now. He plays organ trio too. Oh, and I love Jonathan Kreisberg. Well, he's, he's on our cover player. right now, and uh, Schofield was on the cover last month, yeah. and and Rosenwinkel will be on the cover next month so i play with one of those two <laughs> so you got it you, you know so you're you're mentioning some some good people um for sure well i i don't have much more i just kind of wanted to get your take on on the how the guitar how you feel about guitar players and you know where they fit anything else you want to add to this um no i i think this was uh, first of all for me an honor that you asked me and i i hope that i don't come off pompous and no no are you kidding me um because my no. intentions i've been i've been trying to play music now 53 years yeah, so you're, you're young you're younger than me <laughs> i know we talked about that yeah you know? Yeah. So I'm still just trying to be a better musician like you. I I don't I think we stay young for that reason. I I uh, from your lips to God's ears. Um, but you know it's it's funny. Um, I appreciate what you bring you know to the table. I mean you're you're obviously you're incredibly dedicated. Your your love of performing is so obvious you know when i when i when i see you play and you know i'm, and I'm feeling what you're playing and 
you know, and all, you do a lot of really interesting rhythmic things that I did a little, you know, that's kind of your thing, you know, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and all of that. And I'm just going, man, this guy is really loving himself. <laughs> he's loving what he's doing. I and love I, the music. Know, yeah. yeah, you do. And it's really, it's infectious. And um, it's me off, man. The whole idea off. behind this, well, that's uh, the whole idea behind this little series that I'm doing is to, um, is to try to, shed a, a spotlight on the organ trio and why it's important and um and why so many guitar players just you know they they howard paul was the one that made me you know hit, hit me to this he just said it's mm. it's it's a rite of passage you you have to you know if you're going to be a legit jazz guitar player you know you really because it's it's not an easy thing to do all these little things that we talked about well no. to make the organ no. trio work you you really you have to really know you have to know, feel, you have to have empathy for your, the musicians, you have to have empathy for the music, you really have, there's a cat, yay. Yeah, I got five of them. <laughs> All right. Well, well, thank you very much, Tony. I You're really welcome, do appreciate Bob. it. What an honor. And let me say something about Howard Paul, since you mentioned sure. him. He's a gentleman, first of all. Oh, one, yeah. One person that I respect very highly. Mm -hmm. Howard Paul. You know, everybody brings to the table different things. Right. And Howard Paul's a very great guitar player to play with. And I'll bet you, if you interviewed him, he would tell you, because he was really not an organ player guitarist when he first met. Mm -hmm. Howard's a leader in his own right, right? So he does the whole thing. Like, I do the whole thing. He doesn't need me. I don't need him, kind of. Right. We could do our own things. Right. So we had to work and he, together, and he'll tell you, it took a few years to work together that same symbiotic relationship, right. of, you know, cause sometimes he did busy really comping, you know? Right. And I'd look over at him and, and he would look at me and realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm not the leader of the band. I don't need to fill all this space, <laughs> you know? So it's that kind of relationship that we developed. And yeah. I'll bet you Howard will say now, because he's, he's gone on to play now with a few more organists since. Right. Because of the rite of passage kind of thing, right? Sure. And so I wonder, you know, what his opinion about working with me was and how he gained, if he did any, you know, uh, learning those chops. That would probably be an inter interesting interview. We have a lot of respect for Howard here at Jazz Guitar today, that's for sure. And we appreciate everything he does for us. Thank you very much You're from welcome. Jazz Guitar today, the great Tony Monaco. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Appreciate God it. God bless you, Bob. Thank you, man. Thank you. You too as See well. You soon.